Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Kip Chen and I'm from uh, I'm from University of Liverpool, working on a project of support decentralized governance for smart contracts in Fabric Python SDK. My mentors are Xu, Yang, and Cisco, and Dong. And let's get started. Um, to understand what we are doing at, at Hyperledger Fabric SDK, uh, we have to uh, introduce one of the major changes in this version, which is the life cycle on chain code management. As we know, um, Fabric, um, it contains a lot of duties from uh, supporting the smart contracts based on uh, the first level citizens of the Hyperledger systems, such as chain code, peers, and channels. And so uh, to adopt these changes, we have to um, modify it in the, uh, in the user visible way, which is um, the SDK we provided to our internal users and also the external uh, users who would like to adopt check blockchain technology in their business or their um, running of organizations. And so uh, here comes to our topic of supporting um, decentralized governance for hybrid SDK. Um, the project objectives is uh, to first to understand the lifecycle management on uh, SDK Python and also look into the references of how um, the SDK in other languages have implemented this feature. And also we have to align and track with the new features of uh, Fabric 2.x uh, 2. and further to uh, extend the documentations on how to use the Fabric 2.x uh, SDK. In our project. As project deliverables, uh, we have to uh, support lifecycle 2.0 and of uh, Fabric 2.2 plus versions and also uh, provide a thorough document for how to use it. And, um, after this project for months, um, I get familiar with the Fabric and Fabric SDK and also um, I have read the code base and also worked closely with mentors to fulfill and extend the centralized support. And also, um, we have um, re-examined the previous API usages according to mentor suggestions and we also make some revisions uh, from the following pages. Uh, I would try to uh, explain in detail on how this works. Uh, the the chain code life cycle, I'll start with the first step, which is setup. Uh, to set up a chain code on an organization or uh, multiple organizations, um, we have to provide a number of uh, parameter settings, uh, which, is, uh, config which is configuration provided in the protobuf of the uh, project code base. It involves the name and version of the chain code and also uh, the commencing sequence. And um, there's also another layer, which is the endorsement policy and the validation configuration that uh, lets the peers or the client to decide um, how to apply this chain call or whether or not to apply this uh, to uh, apply this chain call to themselves. Uh, in the new version, which is the Fabric 2.x versions, uh, we extend the flexibility of the endorsement policy and the validation configuration, uh, which is uh, which makes them now uh, now valid uh, even just before the uh, set up of the entire chain code, which gives more flexibility to our SDK users. Um, the commencing or the setup of this life of the uh, chain code life cycle um, is based on the like first level citizens of the fabric, uh, which require uh, which um, takes me a lot of time to uh, look into it and to learn about how the decentralized works on these citizens. Uh, first, the peer, the the client, uh, commence the entire uh, setup sequence and then um, it will later send um, send the uh, um, the global broadcast to its peers and wait for approval um, by communication they're using um, using specific channels uh, that that maintain the consistency and also the efficiency of the uh, message deliverance and most importantly uh, it's the chain code we are trying to uh, be sure globally to support uh, smart contracts and for the transactions. And so um, this is the first step of the chain, uh, chain, code, uh, chain code life cycle and I also try to explain how Fabric works on its uh, first level citizens. 
Uh, and then mm, we have to build from scratch a tar file from the source code and metadata, and it will be available to be sent to other organizations for further uh, broadcasts and approvals. After, um, after the uh, packaged code is sent to a peer, um, we would have to um, install this chain code and then to uh, and then to wait for the approval and we have to save the hash value return on our uh, on our fabric knots and this is also um, one of the one of the middle settings in this um, workflow and come to the step four uh, since we would like to um, like we have like to adopt the SDK in a more decentralized way um, in 2.x version, we added the approval of organization to, um, to gain the robustness of this process. And instead of like um, from the previous versions, in previous versions, um, the, the approval and the application of the chain code is more independent, more in an independent way. And there's only, the, there's only a um, issuer and the recipient model. Which may not, uh, con which may not allow for a consistency within the entire uh, cluster of organizations. Uh, in this level, uh, we, after installing, we will have to send a chain code definition for the organization chain code lifecycle transaction to uh, peers in the organization, and then uh, after the approval, the transaction can be commit can be committed. Um, we have also added uh, a a various set of uh, configuration profile, uh, configuration settings to allow the user to add more flexibility in this process. For example, um, the user may have may want to specify um, only after the approval of several uh, specific organizations um, this chain code can be uh, can be committed. But and also uh, there can be some uh, number of limits. For example, we have to. Uh, get the approvals from 50% or maybe get from uh, three other uh, nodes to get this chain code committed in the transaction. Uh, this is also the way we um, approve for the organization like management and also the chain code governance. And as the um, process uh, about to coming at to the end, um, after the commit, a commit uh, broadcast is sent to the sent as one, nearly the end of the life cycle to uh, organizations and if the commit is um, is confirmed by the majority then the transaction will be committed this is uh, this is the the uh, full the full com uh, parameter set is also um, shown in this code base example uh, which has a lot of parameters to specify finally um, as the transaction is committed uh, the initialization of chain code is now um, is now okay to do. So we will in about so uh, the client will invoke the chain code and then to finish the entire life cycle of a chain code management. And this is uh, all the workflow on Fabric Python SDK. And what we are trying to add to the uh, decentralized governance. And to explain uh, what we are doing here in the SDK layer. Uh, I've also to just um, want to provide a few examples from the uh, from the fundamental layer of Protobuf. It defines all the uh, communication uh, interfaces, uh, including the parameters and the uh, and and the encodings of uh, of the communications of Fabric Python SDK. Uh, we based on these uh, previous settings, and we design a way to to in Python to adopt these. Um, Adopt these messaging protocols and to adopt a, adopt an async await uh, mechanism to make sure this can happen in a uh, in a massively de massively developing um, cluster of knots. And 
this is the maybe some of the very exciting moments of the of the entire design because um this because uh, the developing the development of a blockchain system is something maybe new to me and i have to uh, learn a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge about the learning uh, the design and the development of a decentralized system especially on blockchain and i think probably uh, besides the testing and developing and uh, other things that um, going to an end a full a full test coverage and a, a full test pass may be one of the very exciting moments to let us see that we finally um, we finally just um, support it uh, thoroughly in the way that um, in, in the way that uh, our users may have may need may be happy to see that all the functionalities uh, they can use. Mm. This is uh, maybe some of the passing on the test. Well, um, it may be just a small things uh, in the entire development, but um, I think it's something that really worth sharing about. So I put it here. Uh, uh, of course, um, there is also, um, as we are going dive deep into the systems, um, we can also see some improvement spaces uh, for the for the future work. For example, um, we may add more Chenko examples since we have uh, since the SDK is a very uh, user specific or very to open to developer um, a business. So uh, maybe more examples and more detailed documentations will. Uh, be better to uh, advocate for this project, and also um, the fabric as, uh, the fabric system is uh, changing and its ecosystem is growing. Uh, so a better track and support for latest features may be a very uh, major demand for the SDK development. And here is the project outcome and results. Uh, we deliver all the code base changes to the Hyperledger repo, and we also uh, updated the following documents in the Hyperledger wiki. And for more uh, project information, you may feel free to uh, look into the wiki.hyperledger.org to see what this project is about. OK, so uh, coming to the end, uh, I would like to talk about the insights gained and all the uh, takeaways from this project. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind might be the communication, because um, in an open source uh, project, uh, you communicate on like uh, any other school coursework or any other like internships at industrial companies, uh, because everyone it may be located around the world and of different um, cultural and engineering background. And so uh, it is important uh, for me to manage the feedbacks, deliveries and expectations. For example, um, I'm Maybe I'm not an expert at the at the development of blockchain system at the beginning, uh, but as we make the feedbacks and the small milestone deliveries to my mentors, uh, I can gain more understanding to it, and they will uh, try to uh, leverage the uh, leverage the complexity of the expectations and also just uh, try to help help me through it and to finally uh, reach the uh, target state we would like. Also, the programming skills, uh, as I show the code base as uh, picture photos on the previous slides, um, there is actually um, there is actually a lot a lot of time that is not um, focused probably uh, from the code I write, but also the code I read. For example, in reference of the uh, SDK or, uh, or other lang programming languages, uh, Fabric SDK, or I may look into the um, uh, implementation of other systems. Uh, for example, like Tornado or maybe Flask or other system that uh, have uh, thoroughly adopted the async await or other uh, web application application uh, code base. Uh, that gave me a lot of inspirations and also get me familiar, uh, more familiar with the project. And the key takeaway uh, from this project, uh, the first one is definitely documentations. Yes, um, since we are writing SDK, so we will try to uh, let others understand how to use it and what are some, for example, pitfalls or something that may seem confusing and can, can be more explicitly exposed. So documentation is important. It's not, and it's not only about um, for the external users, it's also about keeping in mind with uh, our collaborators 
on um, how the on how the pro project is currently uh, doing and how can we further extend our work to the next level. Uh, also, uh, the par uh, the paradigm of open source workflow really intrigues me uh, because everyone here is uh, loving their loving their pro the project they do. They communicate together. And also everyone is an advocate for their own um, achievements and also the advocate of um, the use of the project or the entire work ecosystem of workflow inside it. Um, everyone is gaining influence and also have a happy time uh, collaborating um, as a member of the community. And that is very different from um, maybe just a coursework or some in, in industrial internships. And that's what I like about. And thank you all for uh, listening to uh, this presentation. And, and thank you everyone. Thank my mentors for supporting. And if, if there's any questions, please feel free and, to, and I'll maybe um, answer that. Thank you, Kev, for uh, the presentation, very detailed. And uh, I love your feedback, uh, your reflection as well. I, I feel like you learn a lot. And uh, I, I have to say, you know, a lot of people contribute to open source project, not necessarily it's, you know, part of their job requirement. They just love being in the community and collaborating with a lot of other people who are, you know, interested in the same sort of technology or the space and, and just that sort of culture and, uh, you know, doing your best and uh, giving other feedback. Um, it, it's, it's really just that, that ethos of you know working with others i think that's what really intrigues a lot of people and and keeps a lot of people in the community as well i do see your um, mentor um, dex you're here you have anything to add uh, yeah hey Ming. yeah um it was not nice working with kevin and mm -hmm. um uh so i added the um uh, the Jinko life cycle management, and also was wondering to uh, update the wallet modular to measure the identity maybe later. So mm -hmm. it was an, an, a nice feature to add. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm glad uh, Kevin had learned a lot about blockchains. And uh, I hope he will uh, stay in the community and uh, maybe we, we can improve uh, other um, features. And, that will be found. Yep, there's always plenty of work to be done in the community. Um, so yes, please stick around. We would love to see your continued uh, contribution.